The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. And good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you got markets oscillating a bit in positive territory. You got the S&Ps right now up by six points, trading at 41.65. We were just up at basically the highs of yesterday. A little bit of volatility in the pre-market, 8.30, 4.15.40 on the SPY. We spike about 10 points lower. Let's back it up to the ES just to put things in perspective. We were just above 41.70. A little bit of volatility at 8.30, and we're right back to the highs of yesterday right now, trading at 41.65. NASDAQ 100, you talk about a day yesterday, folks. Yesterday might be a day for the record books, man. You think about it, right? AI, maybe the day that AI really started to accelerate. 13,566 on Wednesday. We're pushing 14,000 this morning, just above the highs we had yesterday, up by another three-tenths percent today. You get the Dow. Up by 40 points right now, 32,846. You got the Russell basically flat. You jump over to crude, up about a dollar, 7276. You jump over to the gold contract, up by about four dollars right now. And you check out notes and bonds, a little bit of lower price and higher yield. There's a gap for you on Thursday. Now I think that might be rolling over. Um, nonetheless, we got the 10 year right now, negative by seven ticks, trading at 11306. You got the 30 year, negative by five ticks. Trading at 125.22, we jump over to the volatility index, the VIX right now. Trading at 18.81. And we jump over to the dollar index, dollar index at 104.05 this morning. And let's jump to the headline of the morning. The U.S. debt ceiling deal, how about it, would raise the limit, uh, excuse me, U.S. debt deal would raise the debt limit and cap spending for two years I'm not sure this is going to be what happens, man. Defense spending would be permitted to rise 3% next year. Deputy Treasury Secretary Adiemo says sides making progress. And boy, I don't know. I think the consensus from Republicans is that they want cuts. They just don't want things to stay the same. Um, not sure how they leave the negotiating room with this being a win for them. And everybody's, everybody's playing for personal wins here, as tough as it sounds. I don't think this gets it done. Under the terms of the emerging agreement, defense spending could rise 3% next year in line with Biden's budget. And you got Treasury yields a little bit lower across the curve as that's coming out. The dollar slipping a little bit, as it says, early Friday. You got the Deputy Treasury Secretary warning, as we talked about yes yesterday, that Social Security payments to beneficiaries would be delayed if there's a default. I mean, it's tough to see how it doesn't, right, when basically they need cash to pay the bills. And yeah, we'll see where we go from there, man. But I don't think that's going to get it done, to put it lightly. I don't think that Republicans are going to vote for something that has no spending cuts, right? Imagine that. Imagine that they have to go home after every, all of this and they have no spending cuts. I don't know. Uh, we know where our differences lie. McCarthy told reporters on the Capitol, adding that he planned to work through the holiday weekend. We do not have an agreement yet. We knew this would not be easy. It's hard, but we're working and we're going to continue to work till we get this done. Bunch of words that don't mean much in all seriousness. So we go from there. But nonetheless, what do we got? We got markets in positive territory. I would be careful today, though, folks, because it feels like we got a lot of risk to the downside in terms of there's a lot of optimism in this market, man. I mean, yesterday alone, what did NVIDIA add yesterday? Something like 25 points to the S&P alone. NVIDIA shares this morning basically flat. You were trading at 300 on Wednesday. You were trading at 400 coming into the open yesterday. We're trading at 380 right now. So you look at the S&P, right? And you have an S&P that traded from, I'm looking at Wednesday. Yeah, it was almost the entirety of the S&P almost. It was a large portion was just NVIDIA shares trading higher. As we push 41.70 this morning, so be careful if you get some headlines on that debt deal. 
because I don't think, I mean, I'd love to get some feedback, man, politics aside, right? How does that happen? Do people think that Republicans are going to go in and get no spending cuts? I mean, listen, I don't think that we should even be negotiating over the debt limit. I got no problem with spending cuts, man. But the point of a negotiation, right, is who holds the cards in the negotiation? Who negotiates from a position of strength versus a position of weakness? And what I never understand in this is that when one side says, no matter who is in office, I just want to extend the debt limit because we have to pay our bills. And the other side says, I'm willing to force default on the country if I don't get what I want. It seems like the person or party that is negotiating from the position of strength is the one that says, I don't want our country to default. So what I never understand is where the leverage is from the other side to to basically put the position out there that they are willing, and listen, it's a big bang, game, game of poker, okay, in terms of what are you willing to do? Are you bluffing or are you being real? Because if they're being real and they say they're willing to default, then maybe the other side caves. But if they're bluffing, then why would the other side move at all? And you'd like to think that most politicians would not be willing to force us over the cliff. So I never understand how this goes in terms of that. But from where we are right now, I don't understand how all the hoopla is made out about it. We've been talking about this for weeks on end. And meanwhile, Republicans are going to get no spending cuts and they're going to have to go back to their constituents with that after what's been said. OK, so I don't know how that happens. So be careful today because you get some headlines out there that really rip this market. Um, it's it's I see risk to the downside doesn't mean we don't get a deal and we spike above 4200. But I see some risk, man, if break to the breakdown really ensues today. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll come back after the break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now up by about 10 points. NASDAQ 100 up by 52. Dow up by 65. So let's talk a little bit of inflation. The Fed's preferred gauge of inflation uh, rising 0.4% in April. So the Fed's preferred gauge of consumer inflation, the personal consumption expenditures price index, this number out, I believe, at 8.30 this morning, rose 0.4% in April from the prior month and 4.4% from a year earlier. When you exclude food and energy, looking at the core number, rising 0.4% in April from the prior month and 4.7% from a year earlier. All I'll tell you folks is take a look at this core number, man. That core number is not moving from December, January, February, March, and April. We're sitting at 4.7%. Sorry, just give me one second, folks. Yeah. I'm dealing with a few technical. I got kids running around the house. Um, so summer vacation has begun, folks. The kids are around. Summer vacation has begun. Okay, we'll go back at it. Uh, keep your eye on that core PCE number, folks. That's the volatility you saw at 830, man. And you take that number, 0.4%, you're talking about 4.8% over the period of, if you annualize just the last 30 days in terms of what we're dealing with. Over the past six months, senior Fed officials have focused on prices for a subset of labor-intensive services by excluding food, energy, shelter, and goods. What do they call that? Super core, right? Officials believe that category could reveal whether wage pressures from the solid labor market are passing through to consumer prices. That reading rose 0.4% in April from the prior month and 4.6% from a year earlier. It's the same numbers, man. The Fed's looking for 2%. We're stuck at near 5%, folks. And the other wild card out here is what happens, man, if crude starts peeking its head above where it's been? Because, yes, the Fed is focused on core, but the headline matters as well, man. And we're going to jump over to crude. There's your weekly. I mean, if you're a technical trader, folks, there's a lot of pressure in terms of maybe a floor being somewhere around the $70 price point. I mean, this is backing things up all the way to the beginning of, what, 2021? That's a three-year weekly. Excuse me, two year? What are we backing up to? There you go. That's the last three years. But you really zoom in on the action, man. Since we accelerated above that $70 price point, it's been a bit of a floor. And if we ever get a lift in crude prices yet again, it's going to put a hurt on consumers. And that is going to put a strain on the inflation pressure pressures facing this economy. All right, let's jump around to what else we got going on. So talking about the debt deal a little bit more. One of the facets of this possible deal is talking about the IRS money. And everything gets so politicized, man. I, I don't I don't get the, the contention with the IRS money. I mean, people hate taxes, folks. But if you want low taxes, you got to collect the taxes that you want. And a lot of this money is going to be spent on agents that are just being replaced to make sure that they can actually that they can actually enforce the tax laws are they are as they're on the book books and so what they're going to do is they're going to have potentially some cuts okay rolling back baseline federal spending on most discretionary programs and rescinding the 80 billion dollars the IRS money would then be used to cover much of the shortfall in domestic funding so you get GOP spending cuts but you preserve the programs by taking the IRS money and putting that money back into the programs that de Democrats, Democrats want. Pentagon and veterans health benefits would be spared from any cuts, thank goodness, that seems like an easy one, uh, and see their funding actually increase next year. I mean, vets, come on, man, right? Details were still fluid. Yeah, I would put it lightly, man, but on its face, it could offer both parties a win. Republicans could claim correctly that they secured a cut in baseline government spending for the fiscal year. Democrats could say they prever preserved a vast majority of the domestic programs at funding levels either equal to or just below the current ones. And the IRS deal has become so politicized, but you know that, you know what? That might give uh, Republicans something to talk about. I don't understand it with the IRS deal, man. I don't understand it at all. I mean, high earners, folks, they get away with a lot, to put it lightly, in terms of taxes. 
and you got an IRS that's just been defunded that can't do their job. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like another facet of an easy way to break the government without actually doing it. It's just to take all the workers out of the IRS. We'll see if we'll see how it goes. Uh, the day is young, as our man Basil Chapman says. That is for sure. All right, back to the markets. I mean, interesting that we're sitting right at the highs of yesterday, right? Now, you take the Fibonacci numbers. We're at a price point of 42.20, folks. We dive down to a price of 41.20, and where are we sitting? Right at the 50% right now. If you're looking for a 618, that price point would be 41.81. In the S&Ps, so we're about 10 points off that price level right now. But boy, we got inflation raging, man. We got a debt limit that looks like they're making a little bit of progress. But again, folks, there is so much out there. I mean, they got to get like every single member to vote for this. And what if you got a couple of far right, far left, wherever it is, um, members of Congress that just aren't feeling it, man. And if they're just not feeling it, they need everybody on board. And as I said yesterday, you really get somebody that wants to make a statement for themselves, they call a revote from McCarthy. Imagine what would happen if that comes out today, right? So be careful, because I think there's a lot more risk to the downside in this market with things falling apart potentially pretty quickly. Politics are as bad as they have become, folks. Bad as they've been ever in my lifetime, for sure. And so it's tough for me to imagine that we're going to get an easy peasy deal here with McCarthy and the leader of his party. And I'm not sure he really has control over that party. You can't blame him. Nobody has control over that party right now. Nobody has control over any party right now. But especially with where Republicans are and where their majority is so slim that you have either one, two members that really can throw things in turmoil. I see a lot of risk when any member of Congress can really derail things. And with that, we get the S&P about three points off the high. We spiked on that CPI number to 41.56. We got it all back. We get the opening bell in less than five minutes. We'll see where we go from there. And yeah, let's jump over to, man. Let me find it. Let me find it. Where are we? Come on. You got to talk about a little bit more about NVIDIA, man, because there's only been a few days like this ever that companies have achieved this type of growth when you're talking about the number. $184 billion dollars is what they added yesterday 184 billion dollars so there's a lot of companies that go up by 20 to 30 percent those companies as in when they crush it on earnings those companies aren't worth 750 billion dollars when they come into those numbers ai is catapulting nvidia towards the one trillion dollar club the chips are the leaders in processing the complex calculations driving the latest internet revolution and look at what they added for market value they added more than texas instruments intel Qualcomm or or AMAT, all of those companies combined. Absolutely remarkable when you think about it, man. The largest one-day change in market value among U.S. companies, it's amazing how so many of these took place during COVID, right? Amazon, February 2022, almost added $200 billion. Apple, right up at that number, about 190 NVIDIA, 183 is what they added. Now, here's the kicker. Apple and Amazon, much larger companies when they added that. Percentage-wise, not the same. Um, and yeah, you know, my dad was talking about shorter term, NVIDIA completing the A to B, C to D, and it would make sense, folks. You can't go up forever in terms of on a, on a short term basis when you just went from a price of point of 108 to 400. But longer term, they're in the right spot, man. AI chips. We'll be right back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. You got the S&P opens up by about seven points this morning, trading at 4166. You got the NASDAQ 100 up by 41, 14,000, 14,022. You get the Dow up by 26 points. Now, again, folks, the S&P, okay, yesterday alone, I think NVIDIA was adding 27, 30 bucks. Maybe somebody's got it in the den. It was an extreme amount of money in terms of what they did. Uh, yeah, an absolutely remarkable Duffy. I saw that one too, man. Kathy Wood, I'll try and find that article, man. She dumped a ton of NVIDIA shares towards the end of last year when this thing was pushing 100 bucks. Uh, tough deal as that keeps going, man. Not as bad. Boy. I don't know. That's not how I look at it, man. She's on a five-year horizon, and that's what ARC looks like. That's pretty freaking bad, man. Um, think about what the world has done, folks, over the last five years. Think about where the world was in May of 2018. Think about where it is right now, okay? Thanks, Duffy. Perfect. Um, and there's absolutely no business that somebody is in a technology fund. We go through COVID where we are. I mean, for instance, folks, all right? NVIDIA was at... 62 maybe 30 bucks back then it's at 376 right now you can jump around to almost anything man um let's see where amd was amd i'm just cherry picking right amd was at 13 or 20 bucks five years ago it's at 120 right now chips are going to take over the world man uh even tesla right tesla was at 18 dollars five years ago even right now it's at 185 okay Let's see where Teladoc was. Yeah. The problem is she's in equities that are, have gone down over a period of five years. You jump over to Teladoc. It was at 50 to 70 to $80. It's sitting at 20. That's a big position that she had. Uh, of course, Roku was a big position that she's had. Same deal. Pulls back over a five-year period. Uh, Peloton, right, was a big one that she had. $7. It was trading between $20 and $40 five years ago. So anytime that you get in that big of a hole – she was reaching and uh and yeah we'll see where it goes now with that said folks like i said don't don't think there can't be a pullback man okay you just traded from 110 to 395 now it's all about multiples okay but you want to see some multiples folks do you, do you know how you rationalize a high pe 
the way you rationalize IPE, folks, is you crush it in future growth, and that brings down your PE. Well, guess what? How NVIDIA became cheaper on a PE ratio, and this is uh, Bloomberg talking about five different charts that kind of go over how big the jump was NVIDIA had. Analysts raised their earning estimates, bringing down the PE ratio, blended forward 12-month price-to-earnings ratio. You were at 62 plus. Well, you're not there anymore because the stock is trading so high, you're only at a 46. Pretty remarkable when you think about what that's done. Now, I talked about some of the moves we've had here. Check out the one-day move in NVIDIA, which is about $200 billion. Look at all the companies that it encapsulates in terms of their raw market capitalization. Adobe, Nike, Comcast, Disney, Netflix, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, Intel, GE, all companies valued at under $200 billion. Sometimes the raw numbers get lost because they are so large in terms of the added value that NVIDIA saw yesterday. But this is probably the most important chart when you talk about value, in my opinion, in terms of that P.E. ratio dropping like a rock. But where is it, folks? It's just back to where it was in March of 2023. Now, the kicker is in March of 2023, man, we were still well off the lows. So those are still pretty lofty expert. Um, expectations so you get both sides of it a bit there pretty interesting action as this market creeps higher on friday trading coming into the long weekend and i would disagree with the idea that there won't be any surprises once this deal gets done um, you can't count the votes when the speaker doesn't have control over their caucus. That's the thing to remember here, folks, whether it goes on right now, whether it goes on in the future, and this one's an important one, right? Usually what happens is, is that you have a speaker of house, he commands control of the caucus to a certain degree, they will vote with him because the party stays intact. That's no longer there. So the speaker can't know every single detail and how it's going to impact every single member until almost you go talk to every single member individually and find out. And the kicker is that, of course, they're doing that, I'm sure, okay? But there's a lot of details, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people with their own um, agendas. And so don't be surprised, man, if you get a couple people that say, you know what? I'm gonna burn it all down because guess what? I'm gonna make a, a stump speech now listen, these are just risks, even if they're a tail risk, okay? Don't think it's not possible, man, okay? Because you can be, I mean, imagine, you can be the person, if, I, if you're a Republican member right now, you can be the person that's all over the nightly news tonight, and I'm not saying this would be good for the country, the party, the anybody, okay? But you could be the person that's every, all over the news tonight saying, guess what? I am the one that stop the debt limit from being raised. You, you know, that that can happen, which is, I think, so interesting. That you can say, I am the one that stopped the debt limit from being raised because everybody else was gonna cave as usual, and I'm the savior. That's out there, and there's a few members, I'm sure, that are capable of that, so just keep that in your back pocket, man. Um, yeah, and we'll see where that goes from there. All right. Let's check out how some of the FANG stocks are kicking things off this morning. Apple shares, strong like bull, man, just keeps going up. Apple up about half a percent this morning. You jump over to Microsoft, following their big day yesterday, digesting some of those gains. You got Microsoft shares basically flat, down a tenth of a percent. You jump over to Tesla, up about eight tenths percent right now. 187.80. You jump over to Meta shares, up about eight tenths. Yeah, look at Tesla catching a little bit of a bid. We jump over to some of those streamers. Disney taking it on the chin recently. I'm telling you folks, I know I've been saying it for a long time. It's been quite a pullback. Longer term, there's only one Disney, man. And you are pushing back to the lows of the beginning of the year at 88 bucks. You're at 84. And, uh... And I imagine Iger. I mean, when I saw Iger coming in there, you know, it's traded lower. But, boy, you're back to COVID lows at Disney. You're back to the lows of December 19th. The risk here is that you got the S&P trading at 4,200. This market really sells off on potentially inflation raging or whatever it is, recession looming. Disney may take it on the chin a bit. But I tell you, folks, you know, the one area of the economy that's raging is vacation, services, the whole deal. It's not going away, man. 
and they're going to be in a pocket of the economy that's going to be successful for some time because we are coming in out of an area, folks. So I have a two and a half year old. We're about shoot, I'm probably 30 minutes from Disney, maybe 45 minutes from Disney, and I haven't even made it there yet. Think how many people, okay, are are on the agenda to make it to Disney. The last three years, we're three years and two months into COVID, and they got a lot of backlog, man. It's, it's, a, it's something that never happened ever in our lifetimes, and there is still this feeling that you missed out on life for a year or two, and you wanna get back out there. And that feeling is not going away. And it's the reason why it's putting so much pressure on prices in the service economy, whether it's going out to dinner, right? Just participating as a social member of society, vacations, planes, uh, Disney, what it is. So longer term, man, back to the COVID lows, back to where we started the year. Disney up about four tenths percent right now. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up by 25 points right now. You got the NASDAQ 100 up by 97. Can't hold it down, man. This market just accelerating higher. Pretty remarkable, man. Uh, and I mentioned the 618. We're bumping up against it right now. The 618 of the move lower from basically where we were at the beginning of the week when we hit those highs above 4,200. You accelerate to 41, uh, 4114. And yeah, we've bounced right to the 618 right now. You're just above that price level, man. Interesting action to see where we go from here, to say the least, man. Remarkable markets across the board when you think about it. If 
Give me one second as I pull up here. All right, and we're going to tie it back to Kathy Wood to talk a little bit of those shares. Because it's pretty remarkable. She finally was in a stock that really caught a bid, and she got out of it before before it really mattered. Uh, so when it was trading at 234, when it had a 50 times forward PE, she was talking about the valuation was very high, and she got out of it then uh, for a majority of the shares. They still have some in there. Um, when ARC first launched in 2014, okay, NVIDIA was one of the biggest holdings. I'm sure she wished she held on to that one. And NVIDIA has contributed 13% of the fund's 112% total return, okay? And yes, it's been good to her. But when you've taken it on the chin with so many other equities that rise and fall, it is unfortunate that you tank this thing right before it accelerates another, what, 60, 70 percent for a large position out there. Uh, it held. So in October, when it started to recover, ARC had 750,000 shares. She trimmed that position to just under 39,000 shares by late November, slashing that to zero by mid-January, according to Bloomberg. Yeah. I would stay away from Mark, man. If you're really into some of these equities, then diversify yourself into them. Because a five-year time horizon is brilliant. That's how people should invest longer term, okay? But if you can't make money over five years, over the last five years, folks, when you think about how technology, I mean, just look at the NASDAQ 100, man. I'm not going to spend any more time on this, but the NASDAQ 100 has doubled over five years. Okay, doubled, and she's down. You, you can't have that happen, man. Now, Apple's been a big driver of that, okay? She's not starting a fund to be in Apple and Microsoft and Google, et cetera. But she's in technology stocks, and you got the NASDAQ 100 doubling over that time. So it's something to consider if you really want exposure to those tech, tech stocks. Because even over a five-year period, okay, and people give her grief over days like NVIDIA yesterday, and I'm not giving her grief over NVIDIA yesterday. I'm saying look at five years, folks. You're paying a fee for her to manage a fund that the world has changed dramatically since 2018. AI is going to change the world. Of all the trends that you didn't pick up on, how do you miss with all those bright minds I'm sure she's got in her office that that was going to be the acceleration when really that's the, the most decisive trend that's taken shape in technology since chat GPT came about. Yeah, and very few funds outperform, okay, folks, retirement-wise. Just stick it in the SPY, stick it in, what is what is the Vanguard one, VOO, whatever it is, 0%. Just stick it in there, okay? Um, but, but you don't start a technology company and go flat over five years while the NASDAQ 100 doubles. That's quite an extreme in terms of where you are. And, and and still, she's a fan favorite that catches headlines across the board. So whoever her PR specialist is, they deserve a raise for sure, to say the least, right? All right, let's check out yields. Whoops. There we go. You check out the 10-year. We put it back on a daily. Yeah, chopping around a bit. We're up, but we've faded some of that gain that we got on the CPI, man. No, not really. I guess you drop on that CPI at 8.30. We drop about 15 ticks, and we're just chopping around where we are right now. You jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index trading at 104.17. So we got higher yields. We got a higher dollar. Dollar at 104.31 as of yesterday. And we have a Fed meeting three weeks from this past Wednesday. So we come back on Tuesday, folks, and we are 15 days away from a Fed meeting that is certainly live when we get the inflation numbers that they're at right now. The NASDAQ 100 is its own animal right now, and you are seeing the acceleration, but I would be careful, folks, because NVIDIA cannot save the world. Um, and we'll leave it at that. All right, jumping around a bit. So we talked about the debt ceiling. Let me jump around a bit on where we are here. Yeah, we talked about inflation. Now, what's interesting here, folks, okay, is that we're having the conversation in the den, right? We're talking about that the House already passed a bill. Potentially, you could just pass that in the Senate or at least bring it up for a vote. It's politics. You got to have the House, you got to have the Senate, and you got to have the President, okay? 
So all of them are combined. You could bring it up there. But this IRS money, all right? Now, that House bill that was passed, okay, because this is important information, man. I've, I want to know myself. So what is actually in that House bill, right? Maybe, you know, and listen, spending has to stop, folks, okay? Spending has to come back down. It has to. It's out of control, period. If you don't think so, then that's unfortunate, okay? This article from PBS out here talking about what is in that deal. Let's see when it's dated. April 26th, okay? Now, if you remember... This is kind of a, a wish list from Republicans. Never had a real chance to go forward. Biden certainly wasn't going to sign this, okay? This was going to set federal discretionary spending at $1.47 trillion. Pretty amazing that millions turn into billions, turn into trillions. I get it, okay? With cap spending on the big ticket item in the bill, accounting for about two-thirds of the 4.8% 4.8 trillion in deficit reduction that the CBO says would occur over 10 years if the bill's enacted, Okay. That's capping spending on that big ticket item, talking about discretion, okay? But getting to the IRS money, okay? Republicans began their tenure in the majority by passing a bill that would rescind nearly $71 billion that Congress provided to the IRS to upgrade its technology and boost hiring, okay? Now, that same deal is in this deal, okay? Here's the kicker, folks. This is what I don't understand, okay? If things matter beyond politics, because all this is is politics, OK, this isn't talking about money because actually taking money away from the IRS adds to the deficit. They, we need people to collect taxes, folks. OK, even if we bring them down. The CBO has said that rescinding the IRS money actually would increase deficits by more. About one hundred and twenty billion dollars over the coming decade due to the impact on the agency's work, but then he got politicized saying McCarthy said it's needed to protect families from a weaponized IRS. Folks, that's just not real, okay? This is not real. I, 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 you know, you're gonna call me political, but I apologize if you think that because it's not real, okay? The IRS isn't weaponized against families in America, okay? It's not happening, man. And I know politics come into things, but we need an IRS, okay? The country needs some form of taxes to be to let collected to move forward. There's no point in having tax laws if you don't have the people to actually enforce it and get it done. So I don't understand why, if you really care about deficits, why are you taking money away from the IRS that's actually going to cost the country more money than what you're saving? I mean, stuff like this is what drives people bonkers about politics, man. Stay tuned. We're going to finish it up when we come back, folks. One more segment. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P sitting right at that 618 of the acceleration. Lower prices from where we were at the highs on Monday afternoon to the lows of Wednesday. We've risen a solid, what, 70, 80 S&P points right now up to a high of 41, just above 4183. But we are sitting right at that 618 right now, 4181 in the S&Ps. And going back to it, man, and it stinks that you got to go over some of the stuff as, as you do it. But it becomes so politicized that everything loses at the actual value of actually what is going on. You jump over. So the IRS, folks, what I don't understand, OK, is that you're going to have 52,000 workers over the six, next six years that need to get replaced. This has become a rapid talking point in terms of Republicans and conservatives, OK, that supposedly this is going to increase funding and you're going to have 87,000 new IRS agents that are going to be weaponized to attack American families. Boy. Talk about fear mongering, man, because that doesn't sound like a good country to live in where you got 80,000 IRS agents coming back after hardworking Americans, right? Well, thankfully, that's not the truth, okay? So what you have is 52,000 is the number of employees that are going to retire in the next six years alone. And this funding is over 10 years is what we're talking about, okay? So what this will do is this will bring the workforce for the IRS to about 113,000 employees over the next 10 years in the year 2033, which would be akin to the same number of workers you had in the 1990s, the early 90s as well. OK, that's just workers. Yeah. Let alone everything else you're talking about with technology, with workers basically transcribing things by hand when you talk about where they are in terms of technology, computers, et cetera. But the workers alone, folks, it's not a reasonable it's not a real argument. OK, when you're talking about that over 10 years, you're going to add that many employees and you're going to replace the employees that you have retiring or being lost. It's that simple, man. And I don't understand why it's so politicized. And it just keeps going forward and we're stuck in this loop. So we'll see where we go. Folks, thanks for starting your Friday off with me. We got markets in positive territory. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And I meant to talk about it. Check it out on the front page. My dad was talking to our man Tim Ward yesterday. He's going to be hosting a webinar coming up in less than two weeks on the S&P and then on gold. Check it out on the front page. Have a great long weekend, everybody. Safe out there. No drunk driving. Take an Uber. Building wealth trading in the stock market.